Welcome to Life Passages, The Soul's Journey. I'm your host, Nancy Bloom, and today we have with us uh, Phil or Ortiz? Ortega. Ortega, I'm sorry, I knew it all along and I blew it right then, but that happens. And the theme of our show and the title of it is Life Art Empowering Youth. And you brought some guests with you. I did. I, Life Art's been around for nine years, and along the way we built some strong relationships. And we're very proud to bring Familia Unida we got Ricardo Gutierrez, the director of the bike build program for Miranida, and a board member, Freda Ochoa. I'm glad Thanks. you're both Thanks here as well. This is wonderful to now be able to experience what you're doing in collaboration with other presences in the valley. I had been part of uh, the crew on an earlier show that you did with David Nino, the yes. Rogue Artisans and Crafters show. Right, so David, uh, comes to our Life Art Gallery on our third Friday Art Walks. And he's been a supporter of our program for many, many now months. And he's came in and looked at our program. And one of those days we had the bikes, the Familia Unida bikes at one of those programs. He said, tell me about this. And he met Rico and, and that's how the conversation really grew to like the uh, In Their Words show with Steve and then David's show, Rogue Artisan and Crafters. Yeah, we all decided to each do a show with your program because we feel it's so life-affirming, life-giving, and life-changing for young people. And it's been a real uh, pleasure to be here and talk about life art because when we apply for grants, yes. um, I've been able to attach the link of their shows in my grant application. Yes. And because of that, we've been able to receive a few small grants Beautiful. to continue the work working with kids. Beautiful. And why don't you just let us know a little bit about how Life Art started and what is your work with kids? And then we'll move on and hear more about the bikes. Great. Sure. So Life Art stands for Live, Inspire, Freedom of Expression. Life Oof. Art. And it started out as, um, as an opportunity, really. I was at my shop. I love to paint cars. I grew up in Southern California and cars were all around. Mm -hmm. so my uncle had a body shop, so I started painting when I was relatively young. And these are artistic paintings on cars. On cars. And so, and, and really we're painting hot rods and low riders back yeah. then. So I come to the Rogue Valley and I'm, and I'm here a few years and I have my own shop. And I get to my shop early in the morning and it was a Sunday morning. And I hear some young people spray painting the back of my shop. Psst, 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 right? And so I, uh, I was in the Marine Corps, so a swift, silent. Uh, I, wow. I approached around the back. <laughs> And I said, gentlemen, good morning. And uh, they, they, they were kind of frazzled and a little bit scared. And I said, don't worry, um, I want to talk to you guys. And he said, well, are, are you going to call the cops? I said, no, but I want to hear about you know what you're doing in the back of my shop. This is my shop. I'm going to have to clean it up. And so I, I thought that they were going to run, but I picked up their backpacks. Oh. And I said, look, come inside and have a conversation with me. And I, I work with youth in school districts, so I always expect compliance. Mm -hmm. So if you treat kids with dignity and respect, more times than not, they will do exactly as you ask. Mm -hmm. So I picked up the backpacks, I walked inside, and a little shortly after, four or five minutes later, they come, come, they come walking in. And what they said changed my approach with young people. Uh, they said that they were leaving this mural on the back of my shop in memory of their brother and cousin of these two boys that had taken his own life. And this was in 2009, and so I asked them, you know, this is a, a, a this is something that I'm concerned about, just because I love young people. Mm -hmm. But why? And they told me their story, and I was really compelled to do something. I said, why? Why put it on the back of a shop where no one's really going to see it? Why not put it on canvas and tell a story because it's impactful? And they said, we don't have art supplies, and who's going to listen? And so when Michaels opened that afternoon, that morning. Um, it was a Sunday, so it opened a little later than usual. I took him to Michael's, open? the craft store. Oh, yeah, right. So when the craft store opened that morning, it was a Sunday, I took him to breakfast, and then I bought him some art supplies. And then we came back to my shop, and then I went ahead and painted my car, 
and then they were painting their art piece. At the end of the day, I looked at the art piece and it had a beautiful display of my name, Ortega, wow. with some buildings and, and some really beautiful art. And I gave them each $50 for their time. And they were like blown away that I would pay them for their art. And uh, essentially that's how life art began, the concept. And then my wife and I were working at the time with Jackson County Crisis mm. because uh, suicide in our community is prevalent. Mm. It's, uh, 12 to 15 kids a week attempt to take their lives. In our area. In our community. Mm. And, and those are the ones that go to the hospital and get the triage of the staff mm -hmm. there. There's, I think there's many more attempts, but we're, we, it's not revealed. It's, it's not revealed. Mm -hmm. And so I, we, my wife and I wanted to do something. We didn't know exactly how to do that, but with some uh, collaboration with Jackson County Mental Health and with this wonderful lady by the name of Dr. Michelle Morales, who is now a professor for the Masters in Social Work program at SOU, mm -hmm. she helped us start this program. Wow. And, and the program that you started was? Life Art. Uh -huh. Life and Art. tell me again, tell all of us again, what that acronym LIFE is. Say it one more time if you like. LIFE would. ART. LIVE, INSPIRE, FREEDOM, EXPRESSION. Beautiful. They so go together, don't they? They do. That's such a heartwarming story. I never knew in detail how it all began. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to share with the viewers yes. um, the meaning and, and the story behind it. Yeah. And then you started it with the encouragement of Michelle and then you provided art supplies for young people? What was the shape of it and so where the, did it go from there? The shape of it is that we received a couple of mini grants, but we didn't have a nonprofit back then. So we approached United Way, uh, Deanne Everson at United Way, the, the executive director, mm -hmm. heard our story and wanted to help. So she gave us the umbrella of the 501c3 mm. so that we can get funding to start our program. And then from this concept grew this strong collaboration with our community partners. And along the way, we've been able to work with Juvenile Justice, with Jackson County Crisis Center, the hospitals. We work with, I mean, that's how we work with Familia Unida. Um, we've worked with uh, uh, the YMCA and Youth for Christ, and many, many schools mm -hmm. have now embraced our focus. Mm. And how do you work with all of them? So we have after-school programs. I and see. That's, that's really the bread and butter of our, of our program. Now, if we want to be successful with working with kids, and we need to look at their unstructured time. Mm, well said. So when they're in school, we believe that they're with caring adults and with caring mm -hmm. people. When they're with their parents, caring people, it's the in-between. Mm -hmm. You know, we have Wednesday early releases in our community. Mm. We have late starts where the mm. kids don't have a caring adult with them. Mm -hmm. They're kind of tended to take care of themselves. Well, we believe those unstructured hours should have some level of structure. Mm -hmm. So we run our programs uh, after school mm -hmm. and on the weekends and mm. evenings, just when kids typically don't have structured programs to be Right, to. and maybe some kids, their parents work at night, and it's nice to have some place to come. That's right, and so we run our program from 3 to 8 on Fridays mm. at our gallery in downtown mm -hmm. Medford, and 12 noon to 5 on Saturdays, because we want kids to come in during mm -hmm. their unstructured hours. Beautiful choice, wow. And you brought all this artwork, yeah. and I'm very anxious to hear about it. And these two nature-focused paintings, you were saying, have arisen out of another collaboration. Yeah, we collaborated with um, Jackson County's Office of Bureau of Land Management. Uh -huh. And so they wanted to do this nature piece where they wanted to introduce young people to the environment. Mm -hmm. And we're surrounded by beauty. And so we went to Grizzly Peak, and they were guided by staff from mm -hmm. B uh, BLM. And um, they were able to uh, hike. It was a good. It was a good hike in the yeah. kids. So we took about 25 young mm -hmm. people up there, and we had a great time with it. And then when they got to the top, they could look at in any direction mm -hmm. and capture a scene. And they would draw that scene, and then eventually put it on canvas. And then it was displayed at the Bureau of Land Management office here Beautiful. on the Wow. And, uh, and these are two pieces of it. Now it's interesting. It's it's the same day, same opportunity but two kids saw two very different things. That's right. So one focused on the mountain with snow and the flowers. And, and blooming. And then the other one with the fires right. uh, a couple of years and ago. There was there. a huge fire That's and right. left things looking like that. That's right. In a different direction. That's Same right. place, like you said. So so really, we, we pride ourselves on giving kids the opportunity to belong to something pretty special. Yes. Uh, after young people come and feel our value and understand what we're mm -hmm. about, they actually are um, they get their own key. 
So our gallery space is only open to the general public two days a week. Mm -hmm. However, a young person can come 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wow. Because really, the root cause of suicidal ideation and or depression usually is kids don't know how to deal with stress, right. whatever complexities in their life. Mm -hmm. And they just don't know how to deal mm -hmm. with it. Now, we're not trying to solve the issue. We're trying to give kids the coping skills so they can help themselves. And a lot of times if their parents are working or there's not a caring adult, mm -hmm. but they love art, we mm -hmm. provide the art supplies so that they could in, in, internalize what they're feeling and put it on paper, Express. put it on canvas. So out. healing, so healing. It is, it is. I, I've often said that when you have a deep trouble like that, to just cathart it through art, which means to get it out through art, can be so helpful. It, and, and we have multiple forms of the art. We have, of course, acrylic and canvases. We have poetry. We have photography. Ah. We have videos the kids create. My um, goodness. And really what it comes down to is we support local partners coming in and helping us teach classes. Beautiful. At no charge to you. Beautiful. Art yeah. supplies are free. So any donation mm. that we receive really goes to buying the art supplies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And our next partner that I like to talk about is the Central Art Supply. Dan and Ann Ebert, the owners there, give us a fantastic discount so that we can provide this level of support Beautiful. for you. Beautiful. And we, you did talk about how the the two young men that you initially met behind your shop that were doing the graffiti were really trying to honor a, a couple dear ones to sure. them who had suicided That's and there's a painting here related to suicide do you yeah. want to speak about that a moment so the one right behind me here it's uh one of our our mentors that did this uh, art piece and really it talks to the complexities with uh, depression and suicide yeah. um, it's very complex and so we I, I'm not sure we're the right kind of program to solve the issue, but we are. We're an outlet for young people to find outlet. the support that they need. Yeah. And so I'll get a phone call at two o'clock in the morning with a kid who wants to connect, mm -hmm. and you know, luckily Sherry's is open 24 hours a day. So you and can go so there. And we connect. go get a cup of coffee. Mm. We eat some pie. We have a conversation. Mm. And I think that's the value of the adult mentorship in mm -hmm. the end of lives. Mm. Thank you for sharing and. Then we have more adults from Familia Unida. Yes. <clears throat> families United or United Families? United Families. Really correct. Yeah. Strong. And uh, so this is a partnership that has come together to serve youth, right? It's That's not correct. just the canvases, the paintings. Now you have people who are initiating young people in creating three dimensional things that they can use in their lives and get That's around. Right. Youth empowerment doesn't mean art it's just what well, really what it is it's a caring adult working with young people there you go and yeah then, and then having like expectations mm -hmm. now i want our kids in our program to progress so we expect them to go to school give it their best yes and then come out meet with some level of understanding some philosophy that we could both value so i mean you need to have strong values like life art does mm -hmm. and so rico and his and, his, and the people that works with they work with kids in yeah. a different way. Okay, so what way do you work with kids? Let's turn so, our awareness over this direction okay. now, and then we'll go back to the paintings. We okay. still have more paintings to talk so about. So again, my name is Ricardo Gutierrez. I'm the director of the uh, bike program, and what we would like to do is uh, work with the youngsters uh, for them to be able to express themselves through art and a bike. It's a form of art for us. Yes. Um, there's different styles that they can build, whether it's a chopper, whether it's a lowrider bike, whether it's a beach cruiser. To them, it's their, their own bike, their own style that they pick. So they actually build these bikes. They don't just take a bike and decorate it. No, no, they actually build it. They wow. actually build the bikes. So It's pretty empowering. And it really is. And again, like Phil was saying, we just are there as mentors and show them how to do it. Right. You're using the correct tools. Uh-huh. Wow. And so you are mentoring them enough and empowering them enough that they actually then do it, right? Yes. You and don't then, have to baby every step of the no, way. No, and the great thing about them building these bikes is being able for them to show the bike at different car shows. That's right. Because uh, our bike program uh, initially started with our cars. Um, we are a car club, and uh, we talked as, as a uh, club, how can we empower our youth to come out to the car shows? 
So and these with, are painted cars, decorated cars. Correct, correct. Uh -huh. With the uh, with candy paint, whether it's uh, pinstriping, silver uh -huh. leafing, whatever you like to express yourself or, with your or car. Artwork on it. Correct. Mm -hmm. So with that doing, that we were able to take these bikes year round through the season, through the car season, show season, and show their bikes. Wow. And we had such a good response with different car clubs that uh -huh. they actually created a category, best lowrider. Best wow. on bike. That's so cool. And they would actually get a trophy, and uh, they take this trophy to the school, and then they have an assembly. And wow. in front of you know two hundred plus kids, the kids get to show the bike they built. And let's we're talking about showing bikes, and um, here are our bikes, beautifully illuminated now with the lighting. Mm -hmm. And so, do you want to talk about, here's the one that's up right now on the screen. Yes, this one right here um, was particularly done by a gentleman named uh, Tony Chavez. Um, he did all the painting for, for the youngsters. Um, something that it, uh, was, I believe he said 32 hours involved in the paint. Just, so he just did the paint. painting of it once they built it. Yes, and this is done again in front of the kids so they can get an idea of how to do it. Right, because it looks like a lot of finesse it, and it, fine it work. It is, it is. And uh, Tony himself has actually been at Life Art, and he did uh, a program uh, teaching the kids how to do pinstriping. Wow, so and what is and, uh, pinstriping? Uh, pinstriping is, is the more designed of uh, the graphics. I see. Um, that you see on there, uh, right. patterns. I see. Um, and and uh, that's something that Tony's really good at. And uh, Rich, uh, Rick Evans, uh -huh. he's another gentleman that was able to do the class with the youngsters too. Great. So they must feel like they're becoming very proficient well, yeah, in this uh, whole area. Different kids learn in different ways. You yeah. Know, um, we get a lot of kids that learn with their hands. Right. And that that's the way they're, they're expressing themselves through their hands by building a bike. Beautiful. And to create something that's got to be very fulfilling right. and satisfying. Right. You bet. And be able to see it at a, a big car show. Exactly. It's, or it's, even it's win, awesome. a, win a prize. Hello. Oh, you bet. <laughs> that's always nice. <laughs> and you're a board member supporting this whole effort, right? I am. I am. My name is Frida Ochoa. And uh, I actually have kiddos who have bikes as well. Wow. Yeah, my son, he's uh, 14 years old. Uh -huh. He just got his bike not too long ago. Um, he's been with the program for about um, almost, I would say, six months uh -huh. to a year. Um, we joined from Leonida about two years ago. I this see. Will, this is our second year. Um, and we've learned a lot. My kids have learned a lot. They've come out a lot. Um, they've used to be very quiet and mm -hmm. very uh, just in the, in the house, mm -hmm. didn't do much. And when we joined Familia Unida, my son really came out and so stepped out, out and huh? yeah, and, and he's like, I like the bikes. Yeah. So now every, every show we have, he uh, comes out and he helps us set all the bikes up and cleans them and stuff. Great. And uh, he actually, um, we had a show, um, the Familia Unida show, we had it uh, back a couple weeks ago. And he actually had an interview uh -huh. with uh, Channel 12. Good and, one. And spoke about how he's interested in bikes and how he likes them and how he would become, uh, grow up to become a, a mentor as well. Beautiful. For younger kids. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. I, I know, remember on the show that I crewed that David Ninao did, that there were young people who'd been through the Life Art program and were now mentoring other young people, right? And that happens in that program as well. And, and, and that's it. And, and so Familia Unida and Life Art and the other programs and the key project, Keep Encouraging Youth. Keep have, Encouraging Youth, that's and it's, good. It's really a collaboration of five entities, but we're all working together to, in like ways. We meet mm -hmm. once a month and we try to talk about our programs. And then we find natural ways to partner nice. and work with our youth. And, Here's some, you know, Rico sent me kids that like want to explore with art, and yes. I sent them kids that want to work with their hands. That's right. And Create so, something. So we, yeah. we as a partnership, uh, share the youth, and mm -hmm. we have since we have like values, we work with kids relatively the same. Beautiful. Yeah. And um, before we're complete, maybe you want to share a little bit about the other artworks that you brought. Sure. We, behind you is this wonderful piece of the yeah, I Have a Dream from. <laughs> Martin Luther King, and it's the perception, the perspective of, you know, speaking to the crowd and, and and talking about the I Have a Dream speech. And this is part of a series that we wanted to do is honor people in history from a, uh, a different perspective, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is him looking out 
what uh, he might have experienced. He might have expressed, uh, yeah, experience at the time. As he's speaking. As he's speaking. And, uh, and the value idea. in that is young people, we, we try to encourage them to be them, their own leaders. Yes. Um, and, and putting them in that perspective, um, I think, by, you know, the, the best part of the, the art is, is the fact that we have conversations with the youth in its development. Uh-huh. Okay, so what do you think he, Martin Luther King was feeling that day? Mm -hmm. What do you think uh, he did to prepare for that day? Mm. What, what's, what's going around in his environment? How mm. can the family support him? Mm -hmm. So we have these great conversation pieces in the development of the art. Beautiful. And to your left there, you have Dolores Huerta, and she uh, helped fund, uh, start the um, Farm Workers Association in Southern California, and um, it grew to a national union supporting mm -hmm. farm workers. Mm -hmm. And huelga means the struggle or the yes. fight. And we believe that, and this is actually by a young uh, student from Eagle Point High School, Julie wow. Sevilla. And it's just a fantastic piece. She, she had to commit to it. Uh, she had a sketch of it at first, and then she gets the canvas, then she gets the art supplies, and then she has a completed, completed piece. Wow, and it looks like it'd be a great poster. Doesn't it look wonderful? It really is wonderful. And the perspective here is that, um, you know, kind of from the floor looking up and kind of empowering the youth to like, she fought for what she believed in. Right. And uh, we support that that perspective. And so, yeah. And I feel like. Yeah. And I like the, the posture, because that is the triumphant posture. <laughs> Yo, we got this. <laughs> That's right. Si se puede. Si se puede. <laughs> wow. OK, then. And we have life over here. We're talking about life arts. Yeah, life art. This is actually one of our parents uh, of one of the youth that comes to our program. Uh -huh. um, and he, you know, a lot of our parents uh, have artistic skill, and and so he wanted to create something and give it back to us. Um, a lot Beautiful. of times, we facilitate uh -huh. the conversations between parents and kids. Right. Right. And that's they're wonderful. both there in they're that same there sphere. In the same space. So when the kids create art. The parents might create art uh -huh. and bridge some level of understanding. Right, take some more into resonance with each other. That's right. I also brought some pictures. If, uh, yeah, let's see the pictures. Oh my goodness, and we're, our time is moving along. Let's see them. We'll call up those photos from the control room for us to view. And waiting with, ah, oh, I've loved that. Talk about that. Here's just some pictures. I, I submitted just a couple of pictures that um, we believe are, are telling of our program. And then um, the reality is that every kid has uh, a different story, right? And a different story. So I think there's four pictures that we have here. And that's the one you have on your Facebook something. Yeah, it right? is. It's the one on the Facebook page. Yeah. Um, really, the kids communicate through Facebook, uh, you know. Yes, they do, and I'm so glad you do. This is just a Friday night gathering of the kids <laughs> at our gallery. So these are the kids that were on our gallery that Friday night. And I we see. said, hey, let's take a picture outside. Yeah. Um, and this is kind of a, some of those youth there come from Juvenile Justice. Okay. So we have a partnership with Joe Ferguson and Juvenile Justice, and they come on Fridays. Great. Uh, this is at... And they're housed at Juvenile Justice? Yep. Uh -huh. And they, so they, them, get they, they get to the come opportunity over. to come over and Perfect. participate. And then wow. after, the, after the event, they go back and, uh -huh. and participate in their housing at Juvenile Justice. And the idea is they're going to come out. Yes, yeah, so let's, so let's get them, them ready. The skills, let's give them the skills to be supportive and, and right, and some enthusiasm or a sense of belonging, maybe. And you know, we see kids in our program after they get out. Yeah, and, well, good. And that's what we want. And, and you want them to come to you right. and keep going. This one here is at Eagle Point High School. It was really the celebrating diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. and um, we're doing a lot of murals in schools. Great. Because you know, kids attend school. Um, 176 days. That's right. They're there a lot. So how do we make let's that? Let's touch them there. Eh? Yeah, so your let's, thought? let's keep them connected to their school environment. Yeah. And here's another amazing picture. What's this one? This is so, some of our students that are working on a collaboration. And they have to come up with concepts. They have to choose colors. And then they got to work together. This is called painting by proximity. Mm. So what happens is we um, start with... Um, the concept, but then, and it's quiet at first. It's super quiet. But then kids start to giggle, and naturally <laughs> they build relationships, uh -huh. and there's some trust established. And then we'll throw out prompts like, hey, if you were arguing with your parents, what are some things that you could do to help relieve the tension in the house? Wow. Um, and then they have this discussion, uh -huh. this lively discussion, because that's when the opportunity is there 
to help calibrate as a program. Beautiful. And so, should we just see some more pictures? Because yeah, whatever we see brings up such interesting <laughs> this is at things from you. Middle School. Um, <laughs> So the Medford School District has contracted with LifeHeart to come in and do summer programs. We have Beautiful. over 80 kids a year of our programs at um, the summer programs uh -huh. within Medford School District. And this is just one of their pieces. This is another kid from uh, McLaughlin Middle School that wanted to talk about how art for him is inspiring. He loves to read. So we created art that kind of shows his love of reading. Mm, beautiful. This is our gallery. Uh, we have... Um, events at our gallery. This was a silk screening design class. Uh -huh. uh, and so the kids had a, a chance to design their own t-shirt. And so I think we had over 50 kids. And what's this? This is at White Mountain Middle School. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to recognize some heroes in history. Mm. On the far left, you had Neil Armstrong. Wow. Then you got Rosa Parks. And then you have Chicharito Hernandez, the mm -hmm. soccer player. Wow, uh, cool. And the kids selected those <laughs> heroes. <laughs> and they did very beautiful yeah. portrayals. So again, this we have our events on Fridays, and mm -hmm. um, this specific event, we had a uh, some professionals in the community come out and talk about their profession, mm -hmm. and then maybe not just, for example, we had a... Uh, a We've got two minutes. Two so minutes. A, a, a professional <laughs> coming out as an attorney, ah. and we didn't want to hear about the law. We wanted to hear about the soft skills to become an attorney. Okay. And she said, if you don't like to the kids, if you don't like to sit and read independently for three hours a day, getting ready for a case. Researching. Then being an attorney is not your gig. Oh, that's such good to, to <laughs> save people the time and trouble of thinking it is. And the money. <laughs> yeah, wow. And so your plans going forward are? Plans going and, forward is applying for more funding as we are 100% um, funded on grants and donations. Beautiful. And so I, we appreciate any of your viewers if they'd like to donate, please. Yes, and how Look. can they do that? So on our Facebook page, we have contact information. Uh, so uh, Teen Life Art is our Facebook page. Teen Life, Life Art. Art. Right, and Familia Unida also needs the funding to move forward. And funding for Familia Unida, how do they? So we have it also a Facebook page with Familia Unida and the instructions to do that also in our, our situation is uh, we're getting ready to move into a new a natural building to have a national mm. home. Good. So we, we're going to be needing Funding more tools for that. and, and, and yeah. so on and so on. So it, it'd be going to a good cause. So to find, for people to find your Facebook page for Familia Unida is? Familia Unida Car and Bike Club. Familia Unida Car and Bike Club. Yes. Got it. Well, I'm so glad you both were here. All were here, all three. Mm -hmm. Do you have any last word for the viewers? You know, for the viewers, I'd really hope that um, that um, we value the community, and I think kids in our community need you. Beautiful. So please, please volunteer. Beautiful. Thank you. Such a beautiful call. And my sense is, through the works you do, you build community for our young people and for the adults. So I'm so glad you came in. I just love what we shared, what you shared, and. My hope is for and, and prayer is for your programs to just continue to flourish and blossom and touch and reach more and more kids and their families. Thank you for the opportunity. Sure. Oh yeah, Thank it was you. a great honor and a delight. And there's my music. <laughs>